Hey everybody, welcome back to Whistle Ticket Time here. We are in the bee yard. I am doing a lot of bee videos this year. I do a lot of other things, but hey, I'm always in the bee yard these days, which is good because I love being in the bee yard. So a little history, I've been beekeeping about five years now. I started with two hives, then two hives, and four hives, and five hives. This year has been a big year for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hives, and really, I would have 12 hives, but I sold a friend um, a hive to kind of get him started. Um, so yeah, it's been a crazy bee year. Um, I've expanded even more than I thought I was going to. But hey, with splitting and I caught two swarms, it's just what happens with beekeeping. Every year I get better and better and I try to do new things. I think the worst kind of beekeeper is someone that just gets stuck and they think that their way is the only way and that if somebody does something different, then they're wrong. That's not true, people. There's different ways to do the same thing, and it's okay if you beekeep a little bit different than somebody else. And right, we got a lot of different locations. Even though I live in North Carolina, I'm at about 3,000 feet, and my elevation actually plays a pretty big role uh, in uh, how I beekeep. I'm actually beekeeping more like someone in maybe Pennsylvania as opposed to someone that lives two hours away from me and not in the mountains of North Carolina. So this is what we're working on today. Something I've never tried before, Ross rounds. So I've done cut comb before and I'm still gonna do cut comb the old way. My, my old way was in a shallow super, I got the thin wax that doesn't have any of the support wires and I would let them draw it out. And I'm still doing that because that's fun but I thought I would try this out. These are Ross rounds invented by some guy named Ross, um, I think in the 1940s actually. And it's a pretty cool system. I'm gonna take this one apart. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty easy to put together. What's cool about this is you have these in your hive and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of these and four each. So you'll have uh, 32 Ross rounds when everything is said and done. But what's really cool is that these are supposed to pop straight out and they're already semi-packaged on the side. These white rings pop out and they're part of the packaging. And it also comes with uh, its packages and all that, the rings. And if you've never had cut comb before, it is a cool treat. Um, it's one of the ways that they used to do beekeeping, but it is um, more expensive to buy. But hey, if you're a beekeeper, this is a great way to make a little more money, but you're taking a resource, right? You're taking the comb and selling it. This wax is 100% edible, and they're going to draw this out on each side, and then you're just going to open it up and pop it out. It's pretty simple. Um, I am really excited to try this again every year. I do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you the Ross rounds and then we're going to put it on a hive that I know is solid, that has a queen, that has plenty of brood. And I've already put uh, a couple honey supers on. A lot of my hives, even though I have 11 or 12 hives, a lot of those are building hives. I probably won't get a honey harvest from them in uh, June but probably in August. Um, in June, I'll probably have three or four hives where I get a harvest from, but come August, I may have five or six or seven hives where I harvest. But let's go ahead and check this out, and uh, then we're gonna check on a swarm I caught last week to see if I got the queen or not. So again, here's a Ross round system. They all look like this, and there's eight of them. And basically what you do I'm gonna turn this around for us in a second here. There's a spring system to make this tight for bee space. Let me get that on there. I'm gonna flip this just so it's easier for people to see it, hopefully. So you got this solid board here, and then we have this other insert and basically you're going to use this spring system 
and that's going to uh, push the uh, frames together so they're nice and tight. Helps with that B space. I am a little concerned to see if they're going to build this into <clears throat> um, wax or not. But hey, I'm going to trust the system. Let's put it on and then we'll check out that swarm. And normally I don't have my hive so close together, but like I said, um, I'm in transition. I'm building benches. I still got another B bench or two I need to build. But I tell you this, this is a good hive, people. This is a good hive. I may come back and put a queen excluder on this in a couple days. But as you can see, the bees are already moving up. Um, I like to let them have some time. And then I might come back and put the excluder on. But this here, this inner cover, it's worn. But that's actually a good thing. Because this propolis is going to draw them up. Bees like those familiar smell smells. But this is actually a good thing. Okay, so um, I put a few more supers on. I checked on some hives. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually did some painting on uh, the hives because some of these hives are old. Some of them are used. Some of them I've had for five years. So I uh, started painting some as best I could. So I caught this swarm last week, last weekend, uh, maybe Friday night, Saturday night. It's I think so. I'm going to have to check my record book. Uh, but it's been a couple days. So I gave this hive some time to settle. And I think the queen's in here. Um, whenever you um, catch a swarm, if you catch that queen, um, all of the worker bees, the female bees, are going to start fanning. And they make basically like this fanning, buzzing noise. And they're fanning to get those pheromones out into the air so that the other worker bees can smell that pheromone of their queen and they know, hey, this is our new home. We're going here now. So I heard that noise, but it was late at night when I caught this swarm again, like seven, eight o'clock at night. I just captured them from this walnut tree up the hill, put them in the box, and I gave them a couple days to relax. And now we're gonna see if we can find that queen. pretty solid box actually uh let's check it out so for a swarm i mean there's one frame two frames three four five six seven frames of bees already i did actually put um a frame of open brood in here and i have found that that really helps keeping the swarm from swarming again so a lot of times people will catch a swarm, it'll stay in their hive for a day or two, and then it leaves. But this is what I found that, that works for me, is putting in a frame of open brood from another hive, and that's gonna keep them there. This looks like a great hive though. Um, I'm gonna open it up and see if we can find evidence of the queen. They are drawing out this. Oh, wow, this is great, people. Check this out. Evidence of the queen right there. Those are eggs. That's why these black plastic frames are so good, is that you can really see the queen on them. Or sorry, the eggs they are laying. So hopefully you can see this. I'm going to put this back because guess what? I found what I was looking for on my second frame. 
And I'm not gonna bother them. The queen is in here. That's all I was looking for. So like I said, I found my evidence and that was good enough for me. I'm really trying not to over beekeep. I think some people get into the habit where they think they gotta check on their hive every two, three days. I only check on my hives when I think I need to. That's where record keeping really comes into play because I know what hives are doing well. I know what hives I need to check on. And if a hive's doing well, I'll give it maybe two weeks in the summer before I open it up. Or maybe even three weeks if I think they're okay. But right with these new swarms, with these hives that are building, if I find a hive that's queenless, then I know I got to work on that hive. So again, I found those eggs. Hopefully you saw them in the shot. And uh, as soon as I found that, boom, I don't need to do anything else because I found what I needed. So I hope this video has been helpful. Keep on watching and keep on beekeeping.